Hi, so this is your Wednesday lecture part two. Part two because it is truly a coda, the word I'll keep using, it's the end of the lecture and it's not as essential. It's more of me um, capturing some deepening and enriching information that I think you might like to have. It's relevant to the argument that I was making in my second model about Simon. I argued that the scene where Simon faces off with the head of the pig is a scene about the knowledge, the deep knowledge that Simon has of evil and the fact that evil is alive on the island. The claim for paragraph one was that Simon and Simon alone has this power of knowledge, this wisdom about the real beast, the beast within. The second paragraph was that the evil though, it's not an illusion. It's not only in their heads, it's real and it's a living, breathing thing on the island. It moves and it has dominion. That second part makes a lot more sense and is a lot richer with the introduction of Beeslebub. And so I wanna present on that. Here he is, Beeslebub. So I'm calling this coda power in Beeslebub. The Hebrew, the Hebrew words Baal Zebub literally translates to Lord of the Flies. So, this isn't just a private pet project of mine that I think is interesting. This is very much driving as the inspiration for Golding's book, Lord of the Flies. And I'll tell you a little bit about Baal Zebub. The word Baal it means Lord or ruler, and Zebub translates, maybe ironically, we're not entirely sure, to um, flies, Lord of the Flies, Lord of Decay, Lord of creatures that circle death. Baal was worshipped as a deity Though he was already seen to have demonic powers, he was still worshipped by the Philistines who lived in um, the Middle East, 12th century to about the 7th century. And that tradition shows up in so many other faith traditions as well. Baalzebub even appears in the Bible in the New Testament where crowds accuse at two different points Jesus of driving demons out by the power of Beelzebub. In, the, in that tradition, in that faith, from that place of Christianity, John Milton is writing. So he has this deep knowledge of Beelzebub, and John Milton, of course, wrote the poem that I assigned as optional reading this week. And I think they all go together, the triangulation of um, John Milton and his understanding of this through the book Paradise Lost, Beelzebub, and everything Beelzebub represents in many different cultures, and lastly, our book, Lord of the Flies. In these traditions, Beelzebub evolves to become the right-hand demon of, sa of Satan. So John Milton, he writes this classic, and it is a classic. It is um, published in 1667, 60 years or so after the heyday of Shakespeare. John Milton tries hard to be as important as somebody like Shakespeare, and he was. He wanted his epic to look like, feel like, be like the old Latin narrative ep epics like the Aeneid, or even older, the Greek ones. And so he writes Paradise Lost as this massive trope. It's 12 books, and each book is really long, which you get a taste for if you were reading the first part of book one. It's poem. It's written in blank verse, which means unrhyming iambic pentameter. And in this one, this narrative... Satan is one of the main characters, and he and his rebel angels are cast out like lightning bolt from heaven. And the scene first lights upon the devil and Beelzebub waking up in hell, in their new land. And the devil laying there, and this is quoted from book one, soon discerns, weltering by his side, one next himself in power and next in crime, long after known in Palestine, and named Beelzebub, to whom the arch enemy, and thence in heaven called Satan, with bold words breaking the horrid silence, thus began. So thus, after his defeat in heaven, the first words Satan speaks are to his top lieutenant, Beelzebub. And Beelzebub says back to him after his initial monologue, after Satan's initial monologue, that with sad overthrow and foul defeat hath lost us heaven and all this mighty host and horrible destruction thus laid low, laid thus low. So Beelzebub is saying, 
how we lost, and it was a terrible loss, and look at where we are now. So he's despairing. To which Satan replies in his argument to the Lord of the Flies, if then his providence out of our evil seek to bring forth good, our labor must be to pervert that end and out of good still to find means of evil. Are you hearing the beginnings of our book or even where we are now in the book and the way that they're interacting with Simon? Which oft times may succeed, so as perhaps shall grieve him, him being providence. If I fail not, and disturb his inmost counsels from their destined aim. So his job, he sees it, is to disrupt the work of God. We must try to bring evil out of good. So Satan continues and says, Farewell, happy fields, where joy forever dwells. Hail horrors, hail infernal world, thou profoundest hell. Receive thy new possessor, one who brings a mind not to be changed by place or time. The mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. So my, ma my mind and yours, Beezlebub, can make a heaven out of hell and a hell out of heaven. So we will make this place our own heaven because it will be our dominion. And this line really gets me every time where he says, who brings a mind not to be changed by place or time? So we will be timeless. We will inhabit spaces. And when they think we will have gone, we will be there still, unchanged by place or time. And so I hear this and I think of the island. I think of the way that the Beezlebub character shows up in front of Simon through the head of a pig. Lastly, these are great lines. These are famous lines. Here at least we shall be free. The Almighty hath not built here for his envy, will not drive us hence. Here we may reign secure. And in my choice to reign is worth ambition, though in hell. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. So here, at least, we shall be free. I am thinking now of Jack and how Jack is convinced that freedom is far superior to anything that he would have experienced in the home countries because here he can have dominion. But... Were I to do this, I would assert in my argument that Jack is just a puppet. It seems to me that this could all apply to Jack. The Lord of the Flies is gleeful to have caught Jack. Jack is happier reigning in the island dominion than serving any master back in heaven, civilization. So the Lord of the Flies knows that they cannot overpower Simon, that Simon is too good and cannot fall prey to this evil. But Jack, step by subtle step, he works his dominion over Jack. Jack believes he is in charge, but in reality, the Lord of the Flies seeks command of the island through Jack. So this scene where Simon is staring into the head of the pig and Beezlebub speaks to him, now hopefully has a little more richness, a little more cultural depth for you. And if you didn't read the poem because you just hadn't had the time yet, you might use this as an opportunity to go look through the first book of Paradise Lost. I recommend it in general. It's an incredible read. The whole series of books, all of them are available online. Um, but starting with book one, of course, where else would you start? All right. Thank you very much.